Good morning, everyone. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. You made it through the rain, the miserable, Woo. miserable rain. You're really the diehards, right? And they get the Good brownie ones. points, because you know how many texts I've gotten from people of the past 20 minutes? Oy, no offense to those watching on Zoom, I love each of you. But there's a, there are people here. To those online, there's a lot of your, your, your fellow congregants who've made it. So you get extra brownie points as the gates open. Extra brownie <laughs> points. Maybe a second apple, perhaps? Yes, a second exactly. apple. Yeah. An extra apple for your efforts, yeah. So we're going to start this morning with a hine matov umanayim as soon as my mother sits down. It's <laughs> <laughs> the best part. Every time. Bobby yeah. is the star of the show. There's and I'm gonna openly <laughs> confess, we were both supposed to wear red today and I let her down. So okay. I'm, open, I'm openly confessing. Yom Kippur is coming, right. Rabbi, it's okay. So hine matov umanayim shevet achim gam yachad. How good, how pleasant, how wonderful it is to be here together. So we'll start with a hine matov that you know, and then I'm going to teach you one that you may not know. But Rabbi learned it yesterday morning, so he's going to help. You ready? And lie, lie, lies always work. And I think it's in the supplement too. I think it is. Number four. How good it is, how good it is, how sweet it is, how sweet it is, to be together on this day all together. How good it is, how good it is, how sweet it is, how sweet it is, to be together on this day. Back to the top. He came my soul, So this is one of the big secrets of Ramat Shalom, day two. 
Day two is cozier. Might be a little bit cozier than normal given the weathers. And then I don't know if you guys all got the tornado alert as you were getting in your cars. And all, you know what? But you know what? It's always a fantastic morning. We do a little improvising. So I'll call some of you up as I'm going to do right now. Miss Metch, if you would join us up here. Um, and various different people will play different roles. And then we're, we're going to actually do some learning together in a little bit instead of you listening to me. But can we all just make it clear to this lady here yesterday what yesterday meant to all of us? I mean, it was um, really, really, and to Lisa as well. And please just assure Bobby, uh, Bobby, everybody was happy, okay? i just telling you, everybody was happy with your little girl. I just want to make certain you know. You, di you did good, you guys. <laughs> come on up, come on up to our wonderful, it's great to have some of our college kids here with us, some of our graduate students here with us, some of our working professional young people who are here with us, um, and, and, and yes, and our teach some of our teachers who are still, is you school closed today or you, you are like, rad you're not closed, Jill, you're taking today off? Good, I mean, it's just fantastic. So, beer uh, and all of us old folks, right? It's all good, it's how good it is. <laughs> All right, we're going to turn together to the Birchot Tashachar 161, the blessings of the morning. <laughs> yes, they do. Utama ma'afa pai. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu he'olamim, hanoten leshvi vina levan ben yom uven laila. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu he'olamim, rokaharet alchamayim. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu he'olamim, Pokea Ivrim. Amen. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Heholamim Malbisha Rumim. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Heholamim Matira Surim. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Heholamim Zokef Kefufim. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Heholamim Hamet. Hin mitzagave. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu heholamim sha'asa li kol tzorki. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu heholamim ozer Yisrael bigvura. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu heholamim oter Yisrael bitifra. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai. Eloheinu heholamim sha'asani betzalmo. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu heholamim sha'asani bathorim. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu heholamim sha'asani Yisrael. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu heholamim anoten la'ef koach. Amen. You did it perfectly, thank you very much. So, anybody in here, I mean, this is, you guys are diehard, so I feel even silly asking this question, so you don't have to answer it. But if there's anybody in here, or anybody online, who doesn't speak Hebrew, I want you to realize that you actually know two Hebrew words. Halalu and Yah. Halalu means thanks, and Yah is one of the many, many nicknames for God. You put them together, hallelujah. We often think of that being maybe in our, with our Christian brothers and sisters in, in church on a Sunday morning, the hallelujah. That's our word, right? They, we are happy they borrowed it, but it's ours. And so we're going to turn together to Psalm 150, what I like to call the great hallelujah psalm, 262.
to stop us. If you can, we're going to rise together or spiritually rise here or at home. 278. I believe that Eddie has posted the Machzor link online. If you do need it, you can always find it on our website, ramatshalom.org, upper, upper right hand corner. Barhu, 278. Oh, no, ignore me, Cantor. Hatsikadish. You were right. You were totally right. You see? 276. We were right there where we were. I but we were still standing. I just got a little carried away. I knew where away. I was supposed to be. That's it's high point. holiday head. What can I say? <laughs> yes, you have it. Irkata, irkata, shmeraba, v'amad yivrachi rute, v'amich malchute, v'chayechon, v'yomechon. As we turn to 279, 280, Yotzer Or. This is about God, the creator of light. Light's trying to get out out there. It's not going to do that well today, but there's always a spiritual light out in the world. 
104, our oldest, still the mantra of our people, Shema Yisrael. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Shema Yisrael. Put that in there, but they'll, they'll. Should I do it anyway? Yeah, they'll know it. They'll, a lot of them will catch up. We'll yeah. Okay, is that okay with you all? My bad. We're talking about them in front of them. You I know? love it. That's who we are. Okay, this may be a new one for you. The words you'll you'll recognize. Love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul. Which I command you on this day shall be in your heart, shall be in your heart. Teach them faithfully unto your children. Speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down. upon your hand that they may be a symbol between your eyes write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your gates and upon your gates To your children, speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise, and when you rise. One of the things that I love about Second Day, it's, it's, it's an opportunity to learn and experience new and so I said to Cantor Jody I said you know we would love to learn some new melodies and new songs and so as we did at the beginning and as we just did there there's going to be some opportunities to learn as we do just now and I will tell you she has 
I feel so um, that I was in quite a little cave when it came to some of the new Jewish music out there. I mean, one of the powerhouses standing next to me. But um, the, this composer uh, who wrote Hine Matov and it also wrote um, Matovu, I believe, is she uh, the soloist in, in New York at Central Synagogue? She's one, one of, of them. many. Yeah, yeah one she, of them. Yeah. 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 Arian, yeah. yeah. Okay, yes. So her stuff is fantastic. And so the Mika Mocha that we're going to learn. You want to do that one? Okay, we'll do that one. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I? I was just going. I thought I was going to do Friedman this morning, but I could do. I have both. So oh, okay. I didn't know. I'm which sorry. One I was just going here. So I just thought. I we love can do it. it. We can do it. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. We can do it. You'll we'll teach learn it. it to we'll us. Yeah. I didn't want to throw too many new things out at you at once. That's why. But we'll do it. We'll and do now it. I just messed it up. It's 318. Good. It's all good. Let's do this. It, it this has song. lots of lie, lie, lies also. So it's good. I'll sing the first part and then you'll sing after. Lai, lai, lai. Yai, la, la, la. to the Amidah. So if you can, we rise once again. 324. Most of you know this. If you're online, a reminder to, you can always find the Hebrew on the opposite page. Uh, the Machsor link was posted in the Zoom chat if you need it. It's also on our website, ramatshalom.org. 323, 324. <laughs> Anna, <laughs> <laughs> 
standing as we open up the ark for the holiest of prayers on these days. Rabbi Cheryl will introduce Unatana Tokef as Cantor Jody then leads us in this prayer. Let us ask ourselves hard questions, for this is the time for truth. How much time did we waste in the year that is now gone? Did we fill our days with life, or were they dull and empty? Was there love inside our home, or was the affectionate word left unsaid? Was there a real companionship with our children, or was there a living together and a growing apart? Were we a help to our mates, or did we take them for granted? How was it with our friends? Were we there when they needed us or not? The kind deed, did we perform it or postpone it? The unnecessary jibe, did we say it? or hold it back? Did we live by false values? Did we deceive others? Did we deceive ourselves? 
Were we sensitive to the rights and feelings of those who worked for us? Did we acquire only possessions or did we acquire new insights as well? Did we fear what the crowd would say and keep quiet when we should have spoken out? Did we mind only our own business or did we feel the heartbreak of others? Did we live right? And if not, then have we learned and will we change? Page 347. Unatane Rosh Hashanah, all is written and revealed, and on Yom Kippur, the course of every life is sealed. So Rosh Hashanah, we sing those words towards the top middle of 350. <laughs> Kippur, the course of every life is sealed. I know the words are hard. If you want to read them with me, you don't have to, but you can join me. How many, how pass, many pass on? How many, how many shall thrive? thrive? Who, shall who shall live on and, and who, who shall die? die? Whose, whose death is timely and whose is not? Who dies by fire and who shall be drowned? Who by the sword and who by the beast? And our last one here, who by hunger and who by thirst? The Rosh Hashanah. by Sheila Peltz Weinberg. The glory, the glory and, and agony, agony of, of being, being human, human rousing us, entreating us, us to, to wake up, up to, to know, know that we have no power can be filled with power. power. When, when we, we wake up to our transparent nature, nature divine forgiveness shines through us. When, when we forget our names, we become part of God's name. name. When, when we, we learn, learn to act and yield, act and yield, we smash the contradiction of existence. The Rosh Hashanah, one more time.
top of 352. Ute Shuva, Ute Fila, Ute Do. Teshuva and Tefillah and Tzedakah make easier what God may decree. Make easier what life holds in store. Make easier facing the world. Make easier facing ourselves. We remain standing, if you can, 378, our priestly blessing. We're going to bless each other just like we did yesterday. If you wear a talit and the person next to you won't be creeped out by you. <laughs> Wrap it around them. If you're by yourself and you want to, join a row. If you see somebody by themselves, have, see if they want to join in. And we're going to say this priestly blessing. Joe de la Fry in the back row. Are you okay? You're good in the back all by yourself? Because I was going to say, oh, there's Mr. Dennis. Mr. Dennis is coming to her aid. I love it. 378, the priestly blessing. I and you okay there by yourself? You want to be left alone. Good. <laughs> May God bless each of us. May the light of God just fill us with hope. And may that hope make us realize that there is a chance for peace. We will close the ark as we can all be seated. Three hundred and eighty. We're going to bring some peace into the room. We'll sim shalom. Choir members, will you join us on up here? Just choir members, come on up. Nance, you want to come up and sing? Sim shalom. first official choir practice of 2022, <laughs> 5783. You guys rocked it. That was totally improv and it was beautiful. Gosh. So listen, we have two choirs here at Ramat Shalom, two choirs that have been on literally and figuratively since we're on hiatus, have been on hiatus because of COVID. And um, we are slowly working to bring our choirs back. 
And I don't know if you were here on Era of Rosh Hashanah, but Joel Dreyer appeared out of the woodwork and came up and sang with us with choir. So if, whether you sing or not, if you want to raise your voices in celebration, our choir is rebuilding post-COVID, and our youth choir will be starting up as well. And that is quite a shameless plug for our choir. It is never too enough, uh, we can never say enough prayers for peace. And uh, goodness knows some of you are on the front lines trying to make this world a better place. Uh, 382 at the bottom of the page there, you can find the words, Ose Shalom, our prayer for peace. <laughs> done that fast and that was to slow that down like that is really it just so thank you you're welcome um we're gonna bring some of you up and none of you know this i kind of do this as we're going along but i would like to bring up to help us open up the ark for avinu malkenu the kingsley family would you join us please to help us right after that leading into the torah service are the Reinstein boys, if you would like to join that. Dad, I, you could be considered one of the Reinstein boys. You don't have to be, but um, you can both come up if you want, even if one of you really can take the lead. It's, I'd love to have you both on up here. And then stay tuned, because some of you are going to be coming in and, and holding Torah in, in just a moment. We are going to rise as the Kingsleys open up the ark for us for Avinu Malkenu 452. Well, she wasn't there, was it? I was accused of leaving you out, but you weren't there originally, I'm so. A <laughs> Avinu Malkenu, our holiest of prayers where we stand before the open ark. And listen, for those of us who have those deep reconstructionist leanings here, this can be a challenge when we talk about God as Avinu Malkenu, our parent, our ruler but we stand before the essence of all that is powerful right now on Erev Rosh Hashanah, Erev Rosh Hashanah, on Rosh Hashanah day two. And we 
realize, and Una Tana Tokep does that, that you know, we don't have the control, lots of us, myself very much included, like to think we have in this world. And there is a power greater than us that we speak to now. Whatever that power is for you, whether it's Athenu Malkenu or something else, now's your time to have that discussion. Torah, what does it mean, literally? Teaching. And so today what I'd like to do is bring up some of our teachers. And while some of you say, well, I don't teach Torah, Torah means teaching. Any teaching is Torah. And so I'd like to invite up the entire Krasti family to help us with the Torah. Jill Shamp, would you join us? to help us with the Torah. Jody Fry, who just retired after years of teaching, this is her first day to be at second day Rosh Hashanah to help us with, te- with, with Torah. Miss Allison Dolberg, would you come and join us? If I've left any other teachers out, I want you also to come up here. I don't want you to feel like it's chutzpah. I'm looking around, of course, Nancy, um, Susan, Come on up and you'll be part of our Torah procession. We have lots of teachers in our midst. I'm going to have the Reinsteins come on over here. We turn to page 464. Rabbi Cheryl and I will help you with you need it, but I don't think you really do. 464. We do the support. We, you got the support. Ain Kamocha. Ain Kamocha, Vehuchmajonai, Vehain Kamasecha, Mahu Techa, Mahu. Kol olamim umem shotecha bechodor vador. Adonai melech, Adonai malach, Adonai imlo leolam vaed. Adonai lamo yiten, Adonai everech et amo fashalom. Avahamim. Haitiva Bairusan Etsiyan Yerushalayim Tine Komot Yerushalayim Tibecha Levad Batanu Vehi ben so aron va yomer Moshe Kuma Adonai veyafutsu oy vecha veyanusu misanecha mipanecha 
jump in just for a minute and lead us in Adonai, Adonai on this holy day, 468, right below the line. Adonai, Adonai, Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Echad Eloheinu Gadol Adonai Kadosh Benorah Shemo. Echad Eloheinu Gadol. Before we process, Mr. Dennis, can you come here, please? So there is in our tradition something called a ger toshav. A ger toshav isn't necessarily, it's not a Jewish person, but it's somebody who protects and upholds who we are. This man doesn't get enough praise, and um, I just want him to be a part of our Torah procession this morning. He's one of the teachers in our community. Our children love him. Our adults love him. And these Torahs wouldn't be as spotless as they are if they weren't loved for and taken care of by our own Ger Toshav, Mr. Dennis. So you guys are going to process our teachers and our students who are our teachers and have fun out there. We'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
didn't get a chance to hold one of our teachers, feel free to grab the Torah from somebody. We can all be seated. So one of the fun things on Russia, show, by the way, oh, Amy's already here. Cindy Neveloff, you are on deck. And then Carol Catler, you are on deck. For our Torah aliot, for the blessings before and after, we kind of just figure it out spur of the moment. Nobody gets called up by themselves, so don't worry. But traditionally, if you were in an Orthodox shul, the first aliyah goes to the most esteemed members of that community, usually what we call the Kohanim. Anybody know they're a Kohen? So, right, so I was a Kohen, you know, and th those would be the per people that would be called first. That's not what we do here, and I want to do this gently, but the fact is this. Judaism teaches us and has taught us for centuries that it's our elders who are the most esteemed members of our community. Now, I ain't calling any of you an elder because I know what you're going to do to me. <laughs> but we have some of our elders here who are our wise sages who have been here for a long time and the heart and soul of this community is due to you. So I'm going to leave it up to you. It will not be egotistical if you stand now. When I say I would like to bring up our elders, you know who you are and don't be embarrassed by it, okay? There we go, come on, come on. You know it, you've earned the title. Get up, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Shelly. Are you going low? No, I'm, I, see this, I know. I know, it's, but, but these are the people who, the heart and... Ruthie Rhinus, what are you doing sitting down? You said anybody's been a member of 30 or 40 years. You said you weren't going to call people. Well, some of them, when they don't acknowledge how important they are, That's why everybody's like, been a member 30 if I looked at these two and said their elders are going to smack yeah. me, I'm not going to dare do that. I'm going to get everybody. I'm a I'm a Next. <laughs> but these folks earned it. I mean... <laughs> That's right, the long termers. Four, four to 40 years. I know, I did not do that graciously at all. There was nothing gracious about it. Anybody I'm supposed to pick up? All right. We follow Marlene's lead. Baruch Adonai Hamborach Leolam Vahed. Baruch Adonai Hamborach Leolam Vahed. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech alam, asher kervana labodato, benatam lanu etorato, baruch atah Adonai, noten patur. Amen. So you can find the Torah reading for today on, uh, I just lost my place here, on 503. This is the section 
where Abraham goes up to the top of the mountain <laughs> without Sarah knowing. Remember how Sarah was so happy and shocked when she had that little boy Isaac? She gets to the top of that, he gets to the top of that mountain now and, 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 and takes out this big knife and is going to sacrifice Isaac. He's going to sacrifice laughter for God. And thankfully, God sends an angel into that scene to stop that from happening. So the big question age after time after time is, did Abraham fail the test or pass the test? And we've had many debates here and scholars have had debates over the centuries. It's a great post-service discussion. I'm going to take a nap. But um, <laughs> if you want to have that discussion, you know, it's a good one. It's a challenging one. This is a challenging story, but we read it this morning. So for those of you who don't know this lady, I imagine, so this, Marlene is, is one of the founding members of our community, and that look you just gave them, like, Am I doing this alone? <laughs> I can imagine that being a big part of the 70s and 80s right. of this institution, right? right? Thank you for your wisdom and your continued leadership and everything that you continue to teach all of us. You can stand on over here. Um, Abraham, if you were here on Erev Rosh Hashanah, I shared a story about hospitality. Um, and Abraham was the essence and is the essence of hospitality along with Sarah. They would open up their tents, and everybody who came in as a guest was welcomed with open arms. And so in the spirit of Abraham, I, nobody is a guest here. You're all part of the mishpacha. But if you are a visiting us, not an official member of our community, I would like to offer this aliyah to you. And if you're going, oh, my God, I don't want to do this, and he knows, you're not going to do it by yourself. Rabbi Cheryl and I are going to do it. I'd, I'd love to invite up the Dorns as well to come and do this if you're comfortable doing it and um, bring you on up and anybody else um, who would like to. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys are coming up. You want to come up? <laughs> and I'm not going to call anyone out, but if you're a member of my Hillel and yeah. you would like to uh, join us, I know please I, feel I don't want anybody to feel embarrassed. But don't feel you have to. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Wait one second. I'm just waiting for a couple folks to come on up. It's here. Don't worry. And we won't, nobody's going to do it by themselves. Baruch Adonai Hamborach Leolam Vahed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Basar Banu Mikol Hamin Venatan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai 
Adonai, no tain hatorah me. Vayom hishlishi, vayasa Avraham et enav, vayar et hamakom, miracom. Vayom Avraham el ne'arav, shavu lechem pur im hachamor, Vihani, Vihana, Neko Ako, Unushtarebe, Unushuva, Alechem, Vayaka Abraham, El Etz Halam, Vayosem, Ayitzhak, Beno, Vayakak, Biado, at Haish, Bene, Hamafele, Vilkoshlehem, Yachdad. Vayom Yitzchak al Abraham Avi, Vayom Er Avi, Beni Hine Beni, Vayom Er Hine Haetz, Viha Yatsin, El Hazer Leolam, Vayom Er Abraham Elohi, Er Lo Hazer. Thank you guys. You're going to join us over here. Neville, up, don't leave so quickly. This has been a hard year, more than that for you. So may this reading be a healing beginning and a year of calmness for you because you deserve it. Thank you. You guys are Thank going to stay you. right on up here. And can I just say, when, when we ask people to read Torah, they don't call and beg to read Torah. <laughs> They're, they're doing it because uh, because I asked, and and our students are incredible. But when you're an adult, there's that much more anxiety and and fear and trepidation that goes into it. I mean, no offense, Carol. Um, and so I just want to say to our three tour readers today, Louis, Anita, yesterday, I am so in awe of your strength and your ability to stand up to your fear, and so I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for doing this, and um, yep. you're amazing. Absolutely. So this Aliyah, we talked about hope yesterday, and hope often sounds like a hokey thing, and it's not enough as we talked about just to hope. We got to be scouts. We got to go out there and walk the streets and bring hope about, but if you are hoping in a Jewish way, as we talked about, for a better 5783, this Aliyah is yours. Don't, uh, hey, if everybody comes up, that's fine with me. If you're hoping for a good year and you're going to do what you need to do to make that year ringer. come about, the Bema can hold as many as they want. <laughs> That's right. That was, that's my favorite part. Wow, everybody. Barhu et Adonai Habarach, Baruch Adonai Habarach Le'olam Ba'ed, Baruch Adonai Habarach Le'olam Ba'ed, Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Asher Chavanu La'avodato, Benatan Lanu Retorato, Baruch Atadonai, Notein HaTorah. Vayavo El HaMakom, Asher Amer Lo HaElohim, Vayiven Sham Avraham et HaMitzveyak, Vayarok et HaEtzim, Vayakod 
et it sac vino vayasem oto el hamitz veach mimal leatzim vayish lach avraham et ido vayikach et hamakelet lishchot et beno. Thank you. <laughs> Bring Lewis on over. He's going to help lift the Torah for us. We're all going to rise. The beam is sinking a little bit. I feel all this hope up here. It's fantastic. Seated with the Torah out, we take this opportunity to say a, a Misha Berach, a prayer of healing and strength. Feel free before we say this to really either quietly to yourself or out loud as we go around if there are names you want to add. Let's say that Misha Berach, wherever this monster is out in the Gulf of Mexico, let's keep in mind, you know, it's our whole state's going to be affected, some worse than others. Let's pray that we're gonna be ready to do whatever we need to do because it looks like we'll be okay, but our neighbors won't be, and that's all part of Amisha Bayrock, but feel free to say any name. Ron Case. <laughs> Natalie Siegel.
ask everybody to rise. And I'm going to ask that we form seven little chaburot here, seven little groups in our sanctuary. Okay? Ideally, try to make certain, especially if you're a long timer here, that some of the newbies are not left out. I don't want anybody to feel left out. We need, ideally, seven little groups, and then I'll explain. You can move chairs around if you need to. We honor Dennis. He won't get mad at us. It's all good. But seven little groups, and then I'll explain what we're about to do. And if we, and if we don't have seven, we'll figure out another way. So, Telling a bunch of Jews to get organized. It doesn't go well. <laughs> exactly. Once you have your group... You can sit down and make a little circle with your chairs. It's fine. It's good. Everybody have a group. We have seven. Do we have seven groups? One, two. Six. I think we have six. Oh, wait. I think we one, have seven. Those are two. One, two, three. Okay. It looks like we have seven groups. I think there's six. Oh, there's one. Is this one group? One, two, three, four, five. Five groups. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you the ability to do some. So what we, it's okay. We, we can have five groups. It will take out. So, oh, we got six. Six groups. All right. You want to take out your Ruth one? You do I hear like, seven? <laughs> so okay. Six, six. Okay. So yesterday, I talked about hope. What I want each of us to do now, Rabbi Cheryl and I have collected six readings throughout Jewish history, some from the Talmud, some from the Bible, one more contemporary, on hope. You, as your group, will read the text together. You'll try to figure out, and on each of them there are some questions. You can use those or not. How, what does this teach us about hope? And then in about 15 minutes or so, I'll ask one person from your group, you pick that person, to be your group spokesperson, to share a quick summary of your reading, because not every group will see it, and then what it teaches us about hope. Each text is very different. Don't panic. You, there, everybody passes this course. <laughs> Ideally, what I just want us doing is looking at each other face to face and learning with each other. So. Cheryl and I will float around if you have questions, but have fun with it, and we can answer specific questions about your text if you, if you need it. Does everybody have? Almost there. Pencils down still. No. <laughs> All right. I think every group has. Go for it, guys. Have fun.
if you're online, I will share those texts with you. We're just doing a little text study in the sanctuary, but we are thinking about each of you, and we'll share the texts so you can see them at some point.
Okay, like two minutes. We're, I know this is not fair to some of you. Two minute little wrap up. Pick a leader who's going to speak for your group. All right. All right, I sense a lot of seriousness. I wanted levity, and I hope you're meeting people. But this group is scaring me. They're the intense, really. They're the deep thing. So I'm going to hold off on them for a second. But I want to I wanna start with who's got our, um, our biblical texts? Who's got the book of Exodus? You have Deuteronomy? Exodus in the back. So this is, um, well, I'm going to let them summarize it, but we're going to kind of go in chronological order of texts about hope. So, oh, Eddie, can we put on the hand mic? No, just a quick summary of the text. And I'm the Ricky Lake in this scenario, right? Running the microphone around? I'm Pat Sajak and you're Vanna White. I'll be Vanna White if you want to be Pat Sajak. I don't want to turn number letters. <laughs> <laughs> You're Oprah. With the You're Oprah. All right. All attention so to Debbie Hoffman. Did the microphone go off? I was going to do that hand. Hello? There we there go. go. Perfect. Okay. Wait, why does it keep going off? I don't know. What? It's, it's too far. Oh, it's green? Really? Oh, it's too far from the base? Really? Oh, you know what? Move over here a little bit. I don't know. I trust Eddie. He's our guru. So. Hello? Oh, there you go. Okay. 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 We're getting closer to the... Now it's going off. Okay. There we go. Okay. So um, I do think I have to say that the big part of ours was uh, God said, I will be what I will be. So um, that was the big part of our discussion. Is that hopeful? Um, that that was the, I will be what I will be. And it was an interesting discussion because some people saw it as not hopeful if it was a collective, but as an individual, it is hopeful because um, it's kind of God saying, I will be what I will be to you and you and you and you, and everybody takes their piece of that home with them. So like I was saying that in my family, if I asked everybody what God meant to them, off. It's the mic. Um, anyway, that it would be something different from each person and that it's a hopeful that you have that ability to make that choice and that God will be what God will be to you. And that's a really great summary. Awesome job. A plus. I'm not grading. But this goes back to what I said about Jonathan Sachs yesterday, the rabbi from England who passed away, but that the idea that God is in, the, in, the, in Exodus, the future tense, I will be what I will be, is a reminder that 
there's something very powerful about moving into the future. And we have the ability ourselves to be what we will be. So Yashakoach, great job. We have a group that has been working on the book of Deuteronomy. That's you, I assume? I know. <laughs> this group is prickly. I'm just telling I, I, you right now. Tough. These are tough crowds. <laughs> OK. No, All right, summarize it quickly since most of us. Hello, hello, okay, okay. 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 <laughs> Basically, this is God talking to Moses after he's, and telling Moses that he's, he can look at the promised land, but he's not going to be allowed to cross the River Jordan and go into the promised land. And we had four questions. Can accepting that a dream might never be realized be liberating? Is this acceptance a more realistic form of hope? Does hope require certainty? And can seeing beyond our disappointment help us hope? I, the easiest one, I think we all sort of agreed, does hope require certainty? I think we all came to the conclusion that it's the opposite. Uh, if there's certainty, there can't be an emphasis on hope. That was the main thing. Um, can accepting that, it, well, we, we got into the issue here of what was Moses' dream uh, saying, can, it, can accepting that a dream might never be realized be liberating? And we were saying that this was an ultimate dream, but look at all the dreams that he was successful on. And now the Susan, there we go. Uh, Susan was saying that, that it's, this is the idea that's passing a torch on to a new generation. God is saying, you've accomplished so much and so on. Now it's Joshua's turn to lead, and we were then got into a debate about whether Joshua was a warrior or whether he was a leader, or whether he's an organizer, and so on. So we didn't know about that. Um, is this acceptance a more realistic form of hope? We didn't really That's a good uh, come up with any conclusion as to that. Uh, did I leave anything out? <laughs> yeah, I think the so batter. You capture a, a text and, where Moses, Moses, Moses's big hope was going to Israel. And that's taken away from him. And, and what does that teach us? And, and so, go ahead, Susan. Ah, uh, the idea of legacy that hope. And there's this famous Talmudic saying, it's not our job to complete the work. It's our job to do the part. And so God being, as Debbie said, you know, this future tense, you know, some of us will make it this far into the future, and then we'll get others to this far, and this. But we're, we are this chain, and that's part of the hope. Well, part of it too, though, is when you think about um, on Rosh Hashanah, we we talk about us as a community, and on Yom Kippur, we speak in the I, and in the same way that we pass down sort of our hope to the next generation, we ourselves, as we age and grow, have different realistic ideas about what our new hope is and and maybe we are more feel more accomplished with the things that we've done in the past lamentations the book of you got lamb uh, so lamentations is part of the jewish bible it's the book we actually read on um on tisha b'av hello um, it's about the destruction of the babylonian the, by the babylonians in 586 it's a hard text okay ours I don't know why. I think, you know what, Ed, just come, just come a little bit closer to the Bima. Ed, Eddie's laughing at all of us. Right. I don't know if the battery's loose. Or, is right, it loose? All right, let's see. Okay. It's talking about distress and misery and, and wormwood, which is a poisonous bush. But it says, the question is why? It's just bitter. Bitter. Okay. And why, what are you holding in your mind and heart that's making you bow, bowed low? And we think about the world today. We think about the hatred. We think about the uh, lack of, of compassion and empathy for others. We did come to an occlusion. It's actually a, so those are the things that make us bow low that it's hard to be really content and happy and everything else when you have all of this misery and, and uh, bitterness out there. So the next question is, wh what do you need to recall or consider to have more hope? 
We've come to the conclusions that we like animals better than people. <laughs> and, and when we love them and they love us back with their whole heart and there's no ugliness there and there's no bitterness there and they look at us with their big eyes and that gives us hope that maybe, just maybe, the human can copy that and then there's hope that maybe we'll be a better world sometime. Very beautiful. Thank you, guys. So that takes us out of the uh, biblical era, and we enter the Talmudic era, Barachot, the Barachot text, King Hezekiah. Did we not do that one? We did. Who has the King Hezekiah? When do we give up according to this text? Oh, is that back there? Okay, so here we're entering the Talmud, about 500 of the common era. This is another challenging text. Thank you. So this is Barachot, and we start off with uh, our Torah scholar Maya uh, reminding us about generation to generation, Lador Vador, and that when we talk about hope, uh, it combines trust and it combines uh, the need for um, uh, prayer and for mercy, and we get that from our, our connection to our past. And we looked at both the, the Job reference that says, though he slay me, I will trust in him. And we talked about the history of Job and how uh, Job was punished and Job was uh, persecuted until the, until the very end. He had hope and had faith in God. And we, we talked about some examples during the Holocaust where there seemed to be so little hope and so little faith, but, uh, but it was there and it existed. And... When uh, even when the the Nazis wanted wanted Jews to hurt Jews, that many resisted and said, "We have hope, and and if you're going to do what you're going to do, you're going to do it, but we're we're not going to uh, we're not going to play a role in that." So the question was asked, "When do we give up?" According to the text from the Talmud, and and the answer from from all of us from very different perspectives was was never uh, that we have hope through the through the end and uh, and. And we must rely on our, on our, uh, on our past, our present, and our future to keep the hope. Beautiful, beautiful. So now we go to I think really the longest and the most challenging of the texts, which comes from a medieval um, Sephardic text called the Book of Principles. Um, and uh, you got to keep in context here, and I probably should have said this: that think about being a Jew in medieval Spain. This text was written in 1425. The Jews were expelled 1492. Um, this book, how in the world is there hope in this text? Okay. So I'd like to just start reading the first part so you get an idea of how we delved into this. <laughs> hope for something about which one is in doubt whether it will come or not, does disturb the soul, preoccupying it with thoughts of how to obtain it, but hope for a thing which one is sure will come as, for example, the hope for the light of the morning does not disturb the soul, but makes it glad because it conceives the good which is sought and is confident that it will come. So we all were like in silence first. That's just the first paragraph. And, and we're silent for a while, and then one of the questions says, do you like or dislike this text and why? And what it took for us, we were reading it and rereading it and rereading it, and when we finally came to the treasure of what it means, it really was a treasure and it was a gem, and it's kind of like reading Shakespeare. So the, the question was, the, the main question was, where does hope come from? And we looked at the two different places. It comes from your faith in God. However, that may take time. It isn't sequential. It isn't that you reach out and then your prayers are answered and there you go. It takes time and it's patient. And what was the second place? Well, the second place is within us because the strength that we receive from the faith from God then it can give us strength to move forward. So, so Sophia, 
Sophia's in technology. And so we were all kind of reading it black and white and trying to get to the gray. And Sophia, you really shared something um, really important that we all have to reach out for when we're in that black and white. Yeah, so as she mentioned, I work in technology. And so when it comes to circular logic, I'm really not feeling it because that will definitely result in an error and an issue in the script. And I was reading through this, and there's a piece uh, at the very end about hope causing strength and strength in turn causing hope. So I said, well, that's very circular logic. It's one feeding one on top of the other. And you know, for me, being the technologist that I am, I was like, well, that's going to create some issues. This is not a clean script. And so that's kind of what I was able to notice and share with the group. That's really amazing, and I'm so grateful. That you guys really got that, and Sophia, you're right. I mean, this isn't a clean script. None of this is clean, and that's beautiful. Our last group um, is, begins in about 1745, Schnur Zalman, um, and it takes us to my favorite Jewish philosopher, Abraham Joshua Heschel, of the last century. So teach us what you learned. And this was created by a teacher yep. that I learned with out in um, Los Angeles, Rabbi Ed Feinstein. So this mainly, um, this script more or less said that when we lose faith, what we do next is we help others. We, we get outside of ourselves and we give, no matter how big or how small, and that's how we can rekindle our own faith within us, when we kind of get outside of ourselves. Um, so we just shared some stories about what we did, because the questions were, have you performed an act of chassad that stands out? How did it make you feel? What did it teach you about yourself? So, so it took you into actual practical stuff. In yes. Life, which is perfect, which leads us perfectly into this beautiful piece that Cantor Jody and Lisa had prepared, a, a contemporary, ver you know, not Lisa, a contempt. Uh, we, we were talking uh, like two days ago or three, it's all been a, a rush, but um, you know, Kendra Jody said, so what are you talking about? Well, I said, well, you guys are going to teach us about hope. And she has this beautiful contemporary piece on hope written by the same composer that wrote the beautiful Hineni or Hineni that we started services with yesterday. And I think it, it just as the last group was able to make it relevant to their daily lives, this piece is, it, it spoke to me so beautifully and I think it will to you as well. You can hang out in your groups, whatever works, it's fine. I'm just, I hope that you guys most importantly just got to learn and see and look at each other. You can find it on nine, number nine, if you wanna just follow along the supplement.
So I will be posting everybody's readings um, probably somewhere um, if you're interested uh, just to, to learn a little bit more. But I really I thank you for being our teachers today and for teaching each other. A reminder that we're all teachers in this room. Uh, we're going to continue with our shofar service. Unfortunately, I think I'm your only shofar blower today. Did anybody else have a shofar? Oh, Anne, you're here. Good. Anne is here. So... We will not be doing a Takiya Gadola like Mark Steinberg, I am sorry. Or, or close to Peter Krimsky. Or Peter Krimsky. The amazing, wonderful Peter Krimsky. <laughs> um, but we'll be okay. So the Torah, what page are we on? 592. Just for, yeah. Yeah. Just us. We'll be fine. Baruch Please rise. Asher Kirishana Bimitzvatav, Vitiran Elishma Kol Shofar. Is that adjusting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Tikiya, Shivarim Terua. Tikiya, Tikiya, Shivarim Terua. Tikiya, Tikiya. Shivarim Terua Tikiya Tikiya Shivarim Tikiya Tikiya Shivarim Tikiya Tikiya Shivarim Tikiya Tikiya Terua Tikiya, Tikiya, Terua, Tikiya, Tikiya, Terua, Tikiya Gedola. Gary, good job. I'm not going to lie. It really smells like wet ram. It does. Okay. <laughs> we are, are going to put the Torah away. Page 606. I don't know if, oh, yeah. we're a small group, we're family here, right? I don't know if everybody saw what happened to the poor cantor oh, yesterday, dear. Oh, but dear, dear. something happened, 
and the poor woman was just <laughs> sprawled out on the floor and her microphone was over here with the great Elenu. And it was like, in my mind, as I play it back, about 10 minutes of me going, oh, the canter's on the floor. Her microphone is near me. I do what I do sometimes when unfortunate things happen. I start to giggle. So I turned my microphone off. So all you heard were the kids and then you might have seen your rabbi crawl over to your cantor on his hands and knees and hand her the microphone. <laughs> so we're gonna try it again. I can't guarantee it's gonna work, but you know what? That's what makes this place so special. It's real, right? It just happened. There is hope, there is love. <laughs> so, 612, the great Elenu, good luck to us all. Elenu, le la donna la tête et du long et haut se perchit Catch your breath. You ready to do a little more? Yes. My pro. Good. 632. We did it, Cantor. We did it. We did, we did it. it. That we was did awesome. It. That was awesome. 632. Takia. <laughs> Shivarim. <laughs> Trua. Takia. <laughs> Takia. <laughs> Shivarim. <laughs> Trua, Takia, Takia, Shivarim, Trua, Takia.
Big finish. You ready? Mm -hmm. Tikia, Tarua, Tikia, Tikia, Tarua, Tikia, Tikia, Tarua, Tikia, Gidola. Second, if the kids in the room have not heard yet, Broward County schools are closed tomorrow. So, I d or the teachers, I don't know how that impacts private schools, but I would assume you're not yet. Day school, do we know yet? Jill's off. <laughs> What's that? Our preschool's closed. We follow Broward County schools, so yeah. Yeah. Just so you know, the storm has shifted a little bit closer. We're still okay, but we're now under a, we're in the tropical storm big one. Like it's not, maybe it is, so that type of thing. So just be careful. We, um, we're gonna say the mourner's Kaddish. Um, before we do that, I will say I have learned from Cantor Jody that our little modification of that end of the, um, the with the, all the different shofar blowings is truly unique and very much Ramat Shalom. So thank you to Lisa and Cantor Jody for learning along with us. I said, uh, just know the Areshets and then you'll know when, you know, so it's, it's not an easy thing as much as it's wrote to us. Um, thank you guys for, well, for everything, but, but there and having fun. And Anne, good job. Um, if you are remembering somebody special, we invite you to rise with us. We invite you to fill the room with names of people you're thinking about second day. Um, I will let everybody know, and there have been flyers on all the chairs here, that uh, Cantor Jody is bringing her really well-known healing service to us on Yom Kippur afternoon from 4 to 5, which will include the opportunity to remember folks. But we are also doing a traditional Yisker service around 1 o'clock after our main Yom Kippur morning service. And I always say around because it's, it's, like, it's, it's, it's tough. But I've gotten a lot shorter over the years, so I guess that happens, right? <laughs> Oh, come on, Susan. Come on, Cheryl. Give me a break. <laughs> anyway, um, let's, let's, let's remember. Say names, please, of people you're thinking about. Yitgadal v'yitgadash amirabah. Vialma di bra hirute, viam lich malkute, Bechaye hon, uviome hon, uvhaye de hol bait Israel, Bagalau visman curry, vimuru amen. Yehe shme rabba me borach, leolam mulal me almaya. Yit barak, be yishtabach, be yit paar, be yit romam, be yit nasse, be yit hadar, be yit tale, be yit halal, shame de kudisha, brihu. Le Ela, Le Ela, Mikol Birchata, Vishirata, Tushbechata, Venechemata, Damiran, Bealma, Vimuru Amen. Yehe Shlama, Rabba, Min Shemaya, Vichayim Alenu, Veal Kol Yisrael, Vimuru Amen. O se shalom, Bimromav, Uya a se shalom, Alenu, Veal Kol Yisrael, Veal Kol Yoshbe Tevel, the Imeru. Amen. May the memory of all those righteous souls that fill this sanctuary right now, you can feel them, may they continue to serve as a blessing. We can Amen. be seated. I'm going to bring up our yes. choir. Come on up. So in tears, you can find it on the supplement.
is William Freund, William Freund and Lizette. I'm gonna, never going to grab the two of you. I'm going to ask that you join us up on, up on the Bima up here with me. And Eddie, just leave Zoom for a second. I never show you off. What you do for us is truly, truly, truly remarkable. And I'd like to just bring you on up and, and help us with our final blessing um, because you deserve it. I don't know if he heard me or not. He's hiding. He's Eddie. hiding. Would you, would you come up? Would you come up? You hide in the back all the time, and I think it's great. Marsha, would you join us on up here, too? Uh, William and Lizette, come on over. Marsha's been working tirelessly to make these days extra special, and uh, these guys keep us incredibly safe, and um, I just want to make certain. Come on over here. So this, you, this for, for those of you on Zoom, it's because of this man for the past year and a half, two years, that it's been possible. And he also does our sound, and he's here for B'nai Mitzvah. And um, like Dennis, he's one of our Ger Toshavs. He's the wizard people. behind the he's curtain. He's the wizard behind the curtain, literally. So thank you. Um, let's all stand for the Kiddush and the Motsi as we go out into the storm. It's so symbolic, right? Now we enter the, the 10 days in between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur into the storm. So, the Kiddush. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Peri HaGafen L'chaim. I'm going to keep this as a full moon to remind us that Sukkot and all the wonderful festivals come soon. And you can see flyers about that. We're bringing our sukkah on the pickup truck back. And we're hosting it all over the area, so you'll be able to join us. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem min haaretz. And our apples, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, borei pari haetz, shana tova! Thank you, everybody.